Hi, what's going on? I hope everything is going fine. Once again, I'm back with a new video. Today, I'm going to answer you the question which popped up. I know that. Chill out. Ever wondered why your keyboard is like this? And not like this? The answer has a lot to do with this. Is there any reason for it that the unarranged keyboard helps you in typing fast? And why they made such a keyboard that is used today everywhere? Or the keys are arranged in such an order that our fingers can approach most used keys faster? Is there any myth? If yes, then what's the hidden myth behind it? We're here to answer these pop-ups in your mind. But before that, and if you're new to my channel, then subscribe to my channel. I assure you won't regret it. Also, press the bell icon so that it can ring freely when I upload this type of mind-blowing videos. Comment below your precious suggestion, and if you're already my subscriber, then enjoy the video, if you've already achieved it. Without wasting time, let's jump into the video to know the hot reason. I used to think that QWERTY layout keyboard creators didn't really arrange them themselves. Instead, they just poured the buttons in a jar on the paper, and the order was created. But that's not true for sure. But the question is why they made the keyboard in this way. What was the reason of this arranging and we're still using the layout without little change? Is it overrated or not? Let's get started. The first typewriters had keyboards of all shapes and sizes, but the inventors soon learned that they needed to stagger the keys to stop them from getting stuck together because there were some keys order that pressing them together accidentally would jam the typewriter. In order to understand why we went with the QWERTY, we have to go all the way back to Milwaukee in 1874 by using our time machine. You know, our time machine, huh? The first idea of arranging the keys was bought by Hughes, who created the typewriter in piano pattern. The black keys show A to N, while the white keys show O to Z. Maybe he liked the piano as well. The invention stayed happening. Another typewriter was ball writing, created in 1865 by Hansen. But as the style was like a ball, users' fingers got stuck in this style and they can't type well. So the main reason to create a best typewriter was to avoid it from getting jammed. In 1886, the first commercial typewriter was released, designed by a guy standing there named Christopher Scholes. That typewriter included the early version of the same QWERTY keyboard layout that we still use today, everywhere. So why did Scholes choose QWERTY? Well, it was all about how the typewriters were being used. You see, some of the very first people to test out typewriters back in the 1870s were telegraph operators who needed to quickly transcribe messages from codes. The telegraphers had found alphabetical layouts were confusing and slowed them down when translating codes. They gave Scholes feedback, and our buddy Scholes, who loved his reputation, worked over several years to fix that and made modifications to the layout until finally landing on the little bit away from QWERTY. But there was still a little disturbance in the QWERTY. The M was in place of the L, and C was in place of the X as compared to still used keyboards. The fame of typewriters was increasing day by day, and all students used them in universities. Classes of typewriting were conducted to teach typewriting, and women were the expert typewriters. There was a company named Remington, which made weapons during wars. Seeing the fame, they stepped into the typewriter business. They took the typewriter on another legendary level. The company created the Remington typewriters with the layout of our beloved QWERTY. And it's the same keyboard we've been using ever since. Boom! Clapping all around. They just arranged the keyboard as he wanted. My life, my rules. Scholes just fixed the problem, and after a little modification, QWERTY was invented. Finally, our dear buddy got success and took a chill pill. The QWERTY layout has only ever had one challenger since. It's called the Dvorak Simplified Keyboard and was invented by a Dr. Dvorak in the 1930s. And we once again need our time machine. Dr. Dvorak rearranged the keyboard to try and put the most commonly used keys in spots where our fingers naturally sit when typing. Phew, sounds like a good idea, huh? But people were already used to the QWERTY keyboard. Bad luck for our buddy Dvorak. So, 
Why are we using QWERTY instead of Dvorak, which is more relaxing to the new generation nowadays? Well, the answer is everybody used the QWERTY and we are used to it now. Can you change your typing keys layout? No, because it would take so much time to again develop the habit to approach the desired keys unconsciously. That's the reason why QWERTY is still in use even after the invention of other reliable keyboard layouts. It's almost 150 years old. Yeah, 150. You see, mostly you reply to some messages without even processing it in your mind. If you switch to Dvorak, then you can't make it real quick. Now, it makes sense that QWERTY was created to fix some technical issues of the typewriter, and now it's still in use because our fingers know how to dance on the keyboard, right? But wait a minute. If you want to change the layout in right alphabetical order like our inventor buddies, you can change it by using some software and name the keyboard on your name as Dvorak did. Easy for you, right? Well, so now you are well aware of the reason why the keyboard alphabet keys are not in the right order. Now, you should change the order of your keyboard and can type, but have to look for a while to write on it. Let us know how it feels when you change the order. If you have any questions, tell me in the comment below and thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.